Welcome to yet another Mega Mailbag. Now I've got about 10 items here, various different things, so stick around, let's find out what I purchased this time. You may be interested in some of these things. First thing, make sure you check out the links down below for anything I've got here. I usually have links, not always, but usually. CC Tree, 3D printed filament, filamente. Anyway, as you can see, it's orange. 1.75mm, cool, that's right, and orange. It's PLA, very orange. It's not a very strong orange actually, it's not as strong as I'd like it to be, but it's not too bad. It's a, it's more of amber than orange I suppose, I don't know, am I being too fussy? Possibly. So yeah, I got this because I needed some orange filament, because it's something I want to print which has to be an orange. And this is obviously for my Ender 3 3D printer. That thing's been working fine, I've seen comments on the internet about people with the Ender 3s and some say oh they're rubbish and some say oh, they're really good. And Mine's been okay, I've done a few little tweaks to it, nothing extreme, but a few little things to help it out, and it's working fine. It's a good first printer, by the way, especially for the price. I did do a couple of videos on that thing a while ago, I did some on building it, I've done some on some um, stepper motor busher upgrade things, and I had to quieten down, some electronic modifications to make it a bit better, and noise level capacitor and stuff like that as well, before and after the stepper motor modification thing. So if you're interested in those, go and have a look at my previous videos, because they'll be in there, I don't know, probably about a year or so ago, I think it was the last one I did, and a couple of years before that it was the first one. You may have seen these before in previous mailbag videos. 2.42 inch 7 pin white SPI OLED LED. OLED displays. I've shown this before. Just getting a few more stocking up on them because I've quite liked them. Current wise though, if you're on battery powered projects, they use quite a lot of power. Um, obviously depending on how many um, pixels are lit up, I suppose. When they've got nothing on, they use very little power, but as soon as you start lighting stuff up, the current draw goes up quite a bit. So I've seen in excess of 100 milliamps running one of these, just on normal display stuff I've been doing, so it could easily go way above that. So I'm considering using these big displays, especially OLED, because they are LEDs, you have to light them all up. I did a video, well, I haven't published it yet, but you'll see it probably before you see this one, actually. So yeah, probably have published a video on converting these things from SPI to I2C because they are fairly easy to do if you know how to do it. Some more modules. Now these particular modules I'm buying is actually for quite a good price on uh, AliExpress. They're a few dollars cheaper than everywhere else but the other sellers. But you can only buy two at a time. So I keep buying lots of two. I think I might have purchased enough now. I've got to check but I think I still have. So these are the 868 T30D modules from eBite. Two of those both the same. Here's the card. Okay, these are some little sheets of perspex, quite thin. I actually purchased these for a project I'm working on, and I'll show you it. I actually have some little bits of perspex lying around, so I've already done this one. This is a prototype, so it looks a bit rubbishy, but it will do the job for the time being. The purpose is to test the functionality. So I've already got some perspex on this one. You can see it's a bit scratched up and it's a bit old. And... Now these are 80 by 80 millimeters. So the idea is I can actually get one of these pieces, cut it in half, and allow me to do two displays. So I purchased a bunch of those. These are one millimeter, I think, quite thin. The reason I've got them quite thin is because that's enough to protect the display and makes it easier to cut and work with when you're trying to, you know, cut them down to the size. I think I've got 10 of those. It's actually enough to do 20 displays. Fairly cheap. Here we go. We're in. So these are just some system connectors. So these are 2.54 mil or 0.1 inch header connectors, basically. Let's get a closer view of this. So you can get a ribbon cable, you push it in there, and they actually to make easy, quick connections without having to do soldering. I suppose you could always solder them as well after you've got them in there, but it's a nice, quick way of doing it. I haven't had these before, so yeah, that's what they look like from the side. We'll give them a go. They're, not, they're actually fairly expensive. Yeah, I wanted something other than the soldering individual wires all the time, which is a bit of a pain. We have a bunch of SOT devices. I'm not quite sure what size these are. There'll be a dimension spec, I don't know what it is. What are they? Let's find out. AMS 1117 3.3. So these are 3.3 volt linear voltage regulators. Now as I didn't have any 3.3 volt linear voltage regulators, I decided to buy some. And as I always do, I buy a bunch of them. <clears throat> Even if I only needed five. Now I've got some, and that's the internet. I prefer switch mode where possible. There are some little switch mode buck converters, and those are really efficient. Use very little power. Better than linear regulars. These, I think the quiescent count in these things, something like 5 to 10 milliamps or something like that. So if you're on a battery powered project, these aren't ideal. Better use a switch mode. But if you're not on a battery powered project, then it doesn't actually matter that much. It's not too bad. They're fairly cheap things. There'll be links for them. 
Thanks to my Patreon supporters. I have some very loyal supporters on Patreon. Some have actually contributed a fair amount of money over the period of time they've been supporting me. They very much appreciate those people. They help me to buy things like this and help my channel to keep going and buy things from Mailbag and keep you guys entertained. So this is a variable voltage regulator. Let's get one out. And I already have some of these, the sack is the same as this before. I bought some more some time ago, but it turns out they weren't the same. So can you spot the difference? These are ones I purchased previously. Well, more recently. I did have some other ones which I had already used, but I purchased these ones more recently. And then I just purchased these. These ones are just arrived. Can you spot the difference? No, a few small differences on there. But you can't really see obviously from this angle. Now if I change what I'm doing here, if I say, I don't know, do this, now you see the difference, don't you? One ball is definitely bigger than the other. Now I needed these for my project because I actually designed a circuit board to have one of these mounted on it. Because uh, these can do a couple of amps. I think this one might be 5 amps or 3 amps or something, 2 or 3 amps and like. This one's physically bigger than this one and this is what I need. Because I've based it on this design, you've got the same chip, basically the same circuitry, or at least very similar. These ones are physically bigger, I think they're slightly higher current. So here's one of the boards of my projects here. You can see I've designed, I've got a footprint on here which I found on the internet. And say this one, to around that way so you all know exactly where it's supposed to go, doesn't actually line up. Because there's a footprint and you can see it's actually bigger than a footprint. So that is a bit annoying, because I thought those were the right ones. It turns out I need to get some more of these smaller ones. So this one will hopefully fit the footprint. It looks promising, those holes are lining up, so that's looking good. So yes, I've got some of these now, so yeah, I can finish that part. Okay, so I was hooked up to my power supply, just clipped on, got a multimeter on the output. I've adjusted it for 5 volts, because that's the voltage it's going to be used at. I'm seeing 10 amps quiescent current. And the reason I think that's oh, 10 milliamps, not 10 amps. The reason that is, is because it's got an LED on there. So I might have to disable the LED, because that will reduce power, and I don't want to use power, because I want it to be as low a power as possible. So LED is probably doing it. 2 or 3 milliamps potentially, maybe a bit more. So I just want to see what the quiescent current is without the LED on it. So I might just take the LED off that one and see what happens. Okay, so I pulled the LED off, used hot air and took off the tweezers and then it blew away. I don't know where it's gone now, it's vanished, so it won't be going back on again. And you can see now the quiescent current is between 5 and 7 milliamps. So it's, you know, taking it down almost half, really, if you, seven, if you say it's 5. So it's a big improvement, that's, you know, at least sort of 30% improvement, isn't it? At least, just by taking the D off it. Yeah, that kind of thing, if you've got an D on these power supplies, take them off, because it saves some power. You know, if you're on batteries, if you milliamp counts. And here is the bigger brother. This is the one which is slightly larger, and that's sitting at 5 milliamps. And this doesn't have an D on it either. So this one's actually running slightly more efficiently, you know, because the other one's flicking 5 to 7, so this is sitting a rock-solid 5. Interesting. Anyway, it works fine. Another one of these. I suspect this might be some more lower modules, based on the packaging being exactly the same as the previous one. Yep, more lower modules. Now these ones are different. These are the um, 868T20D. So these are the much lower wattage ones. The ones I showed previously, one watt modules. These are 100 milliwatt modules. They use much less power. So these are the battery operated devices and the higher wattage ones I'm using as a base station, which is powered off of our main supply. Whole bunch of buttons. Excellent. Yeah, these took a while to arrive. I was actually hoping they'd arrive sooner because I needed them for this. I had a couple laying around, luckily, and I've used them already. So these are just momentary push buttons. Could come in nuts as well. Just single pole. Normally open. Nothing too exciting, but they're not handy little things to have around. I use them once in a while. Now with this big beast here. So I found myself needing some project boxes and I realised that I didn't actually have as many as I thought I did or any of the right size. So these are very similar to one I've already used. Let's screw it shut. Let's open it up, let's have a look inside. Now I did buy smaller versions of these previously and I've used them, they seem fine, perfectly, perfectly nice boxes. ABS of course, need ABS, a bit more impact resistant. So you got rubber seal in there. You've got a couple of posts inside for mounting boards in, which can be handy or can be a hindrance. Sometimes you just cut them off, but you can cut them off. There's a lip inside there, which that seal goes into. So they are basically intended to be watertight, if you need them to be. A few of those, because I didn't have anything of this kind of size. A bit extended below, anyway, they're fairly cheap. So if you found that interesting, make sure you click the bell icon and, and the uh, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. I always like that to happen. Thumbs up really do help the channel. So I do appreciate everyone that gives me a thumbs up. Have a comment down below, have a chat. I like to hear from people. 
your opinions, that sort of stuff. And if he wants to, I'll, I'll respond to comments if I've got time. I do try to respond to comments, but it depends how much time I've got available to me at the time. I tend to respond more to my regulars. So if you want to be a regular commenter, then I'll just more likely to respond to you too. That's a nice little hint. Yeah, thanks to my patrons that support me as well, because that's helps me to buy things like this and helps me to do projects and miss mailbag videos. And test gear, I haven't done much on my test gear recently. I'm sorry about that, but I've just had so much on. I do have some projects here waiting to be done. So I've got the Marconi 2955, for example, which needs a good overhaul, and I've got the Valhalla. 2713 is it? I can't remember what it is now. That needs an alignment and that sort of stuff. So I've got all kinds of little things to do. I just need to sit down and get the time to do them. So if you want to see Tez gear stuff, sure, definitely subscribe. But you may not see them until I actually get the time to sit down and do them again. I'm just doing these little simple mailbag videos and things like that right now. It's minor review videos, that sort of stuff, which don't take a lot of effort because I don't have a lot of time right now. At least I'm still producing some kind of content instead of nothing. So that's the alternative, isn't it? Okay, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching to the end because that also really helps. And I'll um, see you in the next one. Bye.